Exercise has health benefits like improving heart health, boosting one's mood, and helping achieve better sleep. Different activities can affect your glucose levels in different ways. Long moderate intensity activities like jogging or cycling, called endurance exercises, typically lead to a fall in your glucose levels. While short bursts of intense activities, called explosive activity, leads to an increase in your glucose levels. This includes sprinting, heavy weight lifting, or spinning. Exercises with periods of moderate endurance activity interspersed with high intensity activity may have a mixed effect on your glucose levels. Examples of such activities include the game of football, tennis, or basketball. In any form of exercise, your body remains sensitive to insulin for up to 12 hours after the exercise, which can increase your risk of hypoglycemia. Planning your exercise can help you maintain stable glucose levels during and after exercise. To prevent low glucose levels during and after exercise, follow these pointers. Pre-exercise. Consider reducing your bolus insulin if exercise is planned within three hours. For prolonged physical activity lasting the whole day, you may reduce your daily basal dose. Two, at start of exercise. Ensure your glucose level is safe to start exercise. It should be more than 7 millimole per liter for endurance exercises and more than 5 millimole per liter for explosive exercises. If glucose is between 10.1 to 15.0 millimole per liter, endurance exercises may be started. If your glucose is more than 15 millimole per liter, check for ketones. 3. During exercise. For prolonged endurance exercises, you will need additional carbohydrates during the exercise in addition to insulin dose reduction. This is typically 15 to 30 grams every 30 minutes without insulin. Periodically check your glucose levels during the activity. 4. At the end of exercise, check your glucose levels after exercise. If this is low, treat it. If it is high, do not correct it, as it will drop once the stress of exercise abates. If you choose to take correction insulin, use half your usual dose. 5. After exercise, consider reducing your post-exercise mealtime bolus, reducing your bedtime basal insulin dose, or taking a carbohydrate top-up. For insulin pump users, a temporary basal reduction can be considered. Occasions when you may want to delay exercise include high ketone levels or an episode of severe hypoglycemia within the last 24 hours. Exercise affects everyone differently, and it might take a while to find out how your body responds to a particular exercise. Keep an exercise diary that will help you make informed decisions about your insulin doses and carbohydrate top-up with different exercises. In SG Daphne, we take a deeper dive into insulin and carbohydrate doses for different exercises. Find out more about the SG Daphne course here. Click here to watch the next video, Pregnancy and Type 1 Diabetes. Click here to watch the rest of the videos in our Type 1 Diabetes animation series.